bizarre as we go along. Um, and, and so I, it sort of moves into the outer realms of reality um, that, that I, I can't even conceive of. But um, I think we need to go back to the, the fundamental basic here, which is that um, this organization is a religious order. It's a disciplined religious order. It has its, uh, you know, to use a non scientological term, its penances, it has its rewards, it has its penalties as such, something in, in, in the operation of and the, um, uh, you know, obedience and compliance that one has as a CERC member is absolute. That is what we're here for and that is why. It is based on our agreement with policy and all the things that are done are based on policy. Some of it is CERC policy that is privy only to CERC members as to the reasons why and the motivations for. But I think we need to boil it down to something more fundamental here, which is, is that not only all Sea Org members, but all Scientologists expect that Sea Org members are a crew of tough sons of bitches, which we are. We'll go further, farther, longer, harder than anybody else. That's why we're in the Sea Org. And people who can't cut it, they get out. People who can't cut it, no matter how tough he tried to make it seem he was, are people like Marty Rathbun, people like Amy Scobie, and people like Tom DeVos. But the bottom line common denominator of CERC members who leave and then choose to be critical is that they were real, criminal, out of control, sons of bitches when they were in, which is what these bastards were. Because there are people who leave the CERC and carry on as Scientologists, and they go back to being public Scientologists, and they're just happy as clams in doing so. But the common denominator with these guys is, is that they were up to some real bad, 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 bad stuff. And unfortunately, as Monique alluded to early on in our conversation, they were things that uh, some of them, particularly with relationship to Mike and uh, Marty, are things that we can't talk about. And the thing that's so sick about this is that Marty knows we can't talk about them. And he knows we won't. But they, get, they cut right to the core of exactly why he was unceremoniously removed. Because let me tell you, I dealt with that guy. And when you, when you talk to him again, you tell him that Tony Davis said he is an outright coward. And that he made him out, his, uh, himself out like a tough guy, and he's a bastard and a coward and a psychotic. Psychotic. That he would do this to his friends, the people that he worked with. Joe, look at me when I'm talking to you. The people that he worked with, like us, his friends who trusted him, who thought that he had our backs in the clutches when people were trying to destroy us, and he does this, he has no credibility. He's a bad man and he's psychotic. And you make sure that you tell him that I said he's psychotic. Because he is. Because only a psychotic would do what he's doing. Here's the point I think it really boils down to, too. It's, it's sort of an attempt, again, to paint Mr. Miscavige in a certain light. It, and it makes it seem, I, the recurring thing that I'm getting here with all of this is it says, Dave did this, and Dave did that, and Dave did this. And it's as if there isn't another single blessed person in all of Scientology, the Sea Org, or in management. And that's what's really disingenuous <laughs> here, is, is that Marty, Mike, Amy, and Tom had peers. Those peers had opinions, positions, ranks, seniority, junior, higher, lower, all over the place, covering the map. They all had jobs and these kinds of things. And it sort of seems like a picture is being painted here, like Dave Miscavige is this madman who roams around the base, throws people in swimming pools, locks them in trailers, beats them unmercifully, and that's sort of the Scientology upper level. But then how does that account for... Um, well, here we are in 2009, and there's 80 buildings, 489,000 square feet of renovations, um, three orgs that opened up just in the last uh, a couple of weeks, a 280,000 square foot renovated Fort Harrison, a 173,000 square foot renovated, renovated Oak Cove, um, and you know uh, one of the largest architectural and design firms with 270, uh, with, with 73 dedicated staff just to church projects, another 273 architects, or um, 50 million lectures and 9 million books all produced in-house in the largest in-house digital printing plant in the world or the largest non-governmental anti-drug program or the largest anti -rights, uh, uh, human rights education program or the 150,000 volunteer ministers and, 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 and. So if Dave Miscavige is a nut who's running around beating everybody, then... Have he must be able to things. bend time because clearly, in between beating people, he's doing all the things I just described. And that's where this story doesn't add up. As far as the rest of these allegations, they're absolutely total lies. They're total, utter, complete lies. Um, and I think, uh, I think it bears covering at this point now um, a, a couple things about this. Um, 
you know, certainly the likes of Ray Midoff, Mark Ingram, Mark Yeager, Norman Starkey, uh, all, uh, Guillaume yeah. Sev, all these people who are current uh, members of the C organization. I've spoken with all of them. Um, uh, and um, they, will, they, they absolutely will say that they have never, ever, ever been physically struck, attacked, anything, uh, you know, physically contacted, as you tend to put it, aggressively gone after in a physical way, shape, or form by Mr. Miscavige ever, period. Absolutely not. Never happened. Didn't occur.